Welcome back to Our Chicago. I'm Judy Sue. Children ages 12 through 15 just recently became eligible to receive the Pfizer vaccine. But Dr. Anthony Fauci, chief medical advisor to President Biden, said this past week that it will likely be the end of the year before younger children can get the shot. So how do families navigate summer activities while keeping everyone safe? We're talking this morning about that with Dr. Andrew Kreppel, an associate professor of clinical pediatrics at UIC. Good morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, thank you for having me. So I wanna start with that age group of 12 to 15 who just became eligible to get the vaccine. Are there any concerns that they might experience a different side effects than adults or more serious reactions because they're younger but getting the same dosage of the COVID vaccine? No, I would say is the, is the short answer. Um, the safety trials that have been done in this age group have really been quite thorough. Um, and the safety profile really looks very similar to what we've seen so far in adults. Um, the, the rates of side effects and things have been very similar, even actually better in this age group. Um, so in general, I would say no, there really is not any concern that we're going to see any different side effects or worse problems or anything in this age group compared to what we've already experienced with the adults. Okay, so let's move on to the kids younger than 12. As you know, with the new CDC guidance that people can now go without a mask if they're fully vaccinated, but there is no way of ensuring that those without a mask are fully vaccinated next to you. What does that mean then for the risk of infection for the younger kids since wearing a mask is supposed to protect others? Right. It's a very, a very good question, a very fair question. Um, the truth is that that the children under 12 really will remain the last big group that's that's you know essentially not protected because not vaccinated yet and so i think as we move forward in time they may likely take up a, a larger share of the uh, percentage of patients who have covid um, so yes they they are at risk uh, more so than than perhaps folks who are immunized the good thing though is that we still have not seen the severity of disease and the same burden of disease in this age group uh, compared to what we've seen in in adults and certainly as the overall population numbers go down that also means that there's simply fewer exposures and less chance for these kids to to contract the illness in the first place now dr couple to that end of course we've been learning about COVID as we go um, is it still true the evidence is it still show that kids are generally less likely to still get infected and experience less severe symptoms Yes, it absolutely is. Um, there's actually just some recent data that came out this week even uh, demonstrating that the, the hospital rates of children with COVID um, may not be as high as initially thought. And I can tell you that certainly my experience um, working in the hospital setting is that most of the kids, or I shouldn't say most, but many of the kids who get admitted to the hospital with COVID um, simply have COVID sort of uh, by happenstance when we test them as part of their admission. It's not necessarily the reason for their admission. Um, so yes, in terms of the severe disease requiring hospitalization and mortality deaths, all those kinds of things, um, it's a tiny fraction compared to adults. Um, I do wanna say though that children certainly still can get the infection and we know that children can pass it along and there are rare serious complications for kids with this like the, the multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, MISC. Um, there's some information that we're learning about what people are uh, terming long haul, um, which is sort of having lingering effects of the infection weeks to months afterwards, even when the initial infection may not have been that severe. So there are, uh, uh, significant uh, problems for kids with the infection, um, but they certainly are much more rare than what we've experienced with adults. And the severe disease and life-threatening disease, we're not seeing nearly the the, the uh, frequency of that as what we've experienced with adults. Okay, I have to ask you about the big question, right? What about summer camps and sports for the younger kids who cannot be vaccinated right now? You told me you have three young kids yourself. You're being peppered with these questions at Little League games. What is your recommendation when it comes to playing it safe. Right. I, to be perfectly honest with you, I always go back to the uh, the advice of my old mentor in ID during fellowship, who she always used to say, winks and waves instead of kisses and hugs. And that was long before COVID, but it's still very true. Those same uh, behavioral uh, adaptations, if you will, are really the tried and true methods for preventing 
all sorts of respiratory infections. We've seen almost no influenza, for example, this year because of these kinds of, of mitigating uh, behaviors. So I think we want to encourage our children to, to do that. We want to role model that for our kids. So even if you as an immunized parent may say, well, gosh, I don't have to wear a mask. It may be a good idea to simply wear a mask to model that for your children who are not immunized and who may need to wear a mask, particularly if they can't keep up that, uh, that distancing um, or if they're indoors for events and things like that. Those are the settings where you oftentimes need more of the masking. I have a young girl at home who cannot be uh, vaccinated right now. So, yes, I'll be watching this very closely. Dr. Kreppel, thank you so much for that information. Thank you. All right. And that does it for our Chicago this morning. Thank you for joining us. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.